Hello and thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm coming to you from just outside my house in Liberia uh, to share a thought from the Bible with you for this week. So I've been reading in the book of Exodus in the last few days and I find it to be a really interesting book of the Bible. It starts in this incredible, exciting way with the Israelites trapped enslaved in Egypt and their miraculous escape through Pharaoh's stubborn heart and the plagues that eventually fall on the Egyptians. But once the Israelites get out of that bit of a mess, then the book kind of changes tone and it soon gets into a reasonably long list of laws as well as incredibly intricate and long descriptions of how the tabernacle, the place where God's presence on earth would rest, how that place should look and how it went about being built. But you know, God can speak through absolutely any part of the Bible. And as I fought the temptation to uh, skim quite quickly through those passages in my, my daily reading a few days ago, I instead noticed this little verse in Exodus 31 and verse 2. It says, look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have specifically chosen Bezalel. Now this is God talking here. This is God talking to Moses about a man who, as God himself describes, in the next verse, has great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He was a master craftsman, an expert in working with gold and silver and bronze, as well as a skilled engraver and wood carver. In verse five of this chapter, God says this about Bezalel. He is a master at every craft. And God specifically chose him to work on this most holy place on earth, the tabernacle. Now, as I read this verse, I kind of got to thinking, I wonder if Bezalel had any doubts. I wonder when Moses, you know, kind of walked up to him and said, so Bezalel, I've, uh, I've just been having a little bit of a chat with God and uh, he mentioned you by name and uh, told me that you've been specifically chosen for this task to build this place that needs to be absolutely perfect. You know, no problem, right? You're fine with that. Well, yeah, if it was me, I can kind of imagine that, that I would start to question, am I really good enough for this? Uh, the, the works of my hands good enough to create somewhere that God himself is going to rest on earth. Yeah, you know, I wonder if maybe when he was a younger man, if Bezalel looked at this array of talent that he had and whether he, he felt a little bit discouraged, you know, unsure which, which thing he should pursue. Should I be an engraver? Should I be a a skilled metal worker? Should I be a woodworker? Should I specialize in, in working with fabrics? Should I be a tailor? I wonder if, if he had this kind of doubt as to what he should be doing with his life when he was passionate in so many different areas. Perhaps even living in, in a pastoral community as he was, perhaps some people kind of sneered at him a little bit at his talents. Perhaps he was told you should really learn to do something that's a little bit more useful. You know, you should learn to look after the animals, something that's, that's useful for your family and for your nation. Yeah, we don't know that. That's just me thinking what could have been, but I could kind of imagine that. And yet, and yet, here we find God specifically calling this man that he had designed, that he had gifted with these talents for a very specific purpose. This man who just happened to be in the right place at the right time to do the incredibly intricate and demanding work of God. Wow. 
Well, that's all good for Bezalel. You know, he's this incredibly skilled, gifted man, right? What about me? How is this applicable to me? You may be asking. Well, you're not quite excused because in Ephesians chapter two and verse 10, we read that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That verse is talking about you. You, my friend, are specifically chosen by God for a purpose that he has or he will call you to. Other translations of that verse that we read in Exodus say that God called Bezalel by name for this work. And I just love that because God knows your name. He knows your purpose. He knows your talents. He knows the passions that stir in your heart. And he is calling you out right now to do those good works that he planned for you to do, just for you to do, before you were even born. That's a reassuring thought to cling to when those doubts start to creep into your mind. If God has specifically chosen you for something, if he has put something on your heart to do, then you can guarantee that he is going to give you everything that you need to do that thing. He has or he will equip you to do the work that he is calling you to do. And it doesn't mean that there won't be difficulties. I'm sure that there were days when Bezalel woke up and his, his fingers would have been aching and his eyes were strained from, from looking at all this close work as he stitched and carved, as he managed other craftsmen through long days and nights of effort. There would have been difficulties in that project. Difficulties are kind of part of the human condition, I'm afraid but they're not necessarily bad things. In fact, difficulties can be really good things because they are opportunities for us to see God move through us, to see him move miraculously to provide for us, to see him working in us, to see that work, whatever it may be, completed. There is a calling on your life. There is a purpose why you are here on earth and that purpose, that calling, will not look like anyone else's. You know, Bezalel, he wasn't a great leader of people. He didn't go up on the mountain with Moses to receive the Ten Commandments. He wasn't a preacher. He wasn't an evangelist. He wasn't a missionary. He wasn't a shepherd looking after the flocks. And yet God had something very specific and very incredible in mind just for him. So whatever you do, do not look down on your gifts. Don't look down on the, your passion, on the talents that God has given you, even if they seem really obscure and you've no idea how he might use them. Because your warm and loving hospitality could change the outlook of somebody's life for the next year. Your hard work in that office could make an enormous, an enormous difference to your business and lead to your colleagues questioning, what is it about you that is different? That child that you're putting all your efforts into raising could become an amazing warrior for God or go on to raise their own godly children following your example to them. Your calling is unique and it is so important. Don't compare your life to someone else. Follow after God, seek him, and ask him what he has put you on this earth to do, and then do it with all of your heart. And if you don't know what it is, that's okay. You can ask him, but also you can start digging into his word, because I can tell you, you will find purpose in these pages, you will find that thing that God is calling you to do. Live your life overflowing with love for God, with love for people, and you will be on the right track, I can assure you.
So thank you so much for joining me today for this thought from the Bible. You are called, you are specifically chosen by God. There is a purpose for your life. I hope that's an encouragement to you today. And I will see you next week for more thoughts from the Bible. See you then.